Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. It is the city by the bay. It is the startup capital of the world. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Young Turks. We come to you from San Francisco. Now the Google Launchpad Accelerator program is what we're going to be telling you about on the show today. So if you've ever wondered what goes into an accelerator program, what do startups here that have come from 33 different countries do, what kind of mentorship comes their way, then you should watch this program. So let's get right into the highlights of what we have on the show today. There's so much innovation happening around the world and most companies here in Silicon Valley are blind to it. The program has been very useful for us from the perspective of uh, just being able to scale a technology startup. So I'm walking towards 301 Howard Street. This is the heart of the business district in downtown San Francisco. And this is where the Google Launchpad Accelerator is. So let's go in and take a look. Started five years ago on the Google campus in Tel Aviv, the Launchpad Accelerator is now headquartered in San Francisco. Over the last three years, 78 startups from emerging markets have made it to the Launchpad program that brings with it an intensive six-month mentorship on product design, business models and tech support from the best developers and leaders at Google as well as tech companies and VCs from Silicon Valley. This year, the focus was on artificial intelligence and machine learning startups and we caught up with the global lead of the Google Accelerator, Roy Glassberg, and began by asking him why this program is at the heart of Google. Three years ago, we've decided that we want to focus on emerging markets specifically. Uh, we've realized that we've been using Silicon Valley methodology too much in order to educate other markets and have everybody fit into that box, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So what is this SFO box or the Silicon Valley box that startups in parts of the world like India shouldn't fit into necessarily or shouldn't pressure themselves to fit into? So uh, a few examples of the way of thinking that might create a challenge. Um, one, you will see a lot of investors looking for solutions that would work in America, that would work for the American consumers, uh, which you know, if you look at emerging markets and the market potential, it's, it's a lot bigger and much more interesting in my eyes. So one, that's kind of a trap we need to avoid. Second, success for the VC industry is billion dollar exits. Yeah. I would love to see more companies being built in emerging markets, uh, more sustainable businesses growing uh, at their pace, but providing jobs, providing value to the users and not necessarily look for these uh, unicorns that we call them. Let's talk about, you know, the unicorn because you brought it up. Would you say that there is a sort of return to rationality? So one, there's no return to rationale in Silicon Valley because there's no need to. All right. uh, there's enough money here. It's not a matter of money, there's enough innovation. And the speed and pace in which businesses grow, um, you know, if it's not going to be that investment, it's going to be the other one, but we're going to have more unicorns and we're going to have more amazing companies being built. How is the Google Launchpad Accelerator different? So first we focus on emerging markets only. And today our last class is comprised of 33 companies from 17 countries representing four continents. So I think we've built the biggest experiment in the world on how to help emerging market startups succeed. Uh, second, we look at product market fit companies. So these are companies that already have traction, have users, have secured significant investments. What makes it very different from any other program is that this is the heart of Google. I mean, we're in San Francisco, but we have 40 Google teams involved in this program. Okay. So we're bringing... From Android to cloud. Any technology that you can think of, from Google machine X, learning. machine learning, AI, and then we have hiring and, and talent acquisition and business processes and compensation. Involved. And you're doing this without taking equity in any of these uh, companies, right? No equity, nothing. So what does Google get out of it? So, and I want to link this to the next billion user program, which is the next big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, actually at Google is to figure out where the next billion users are going to come from, what they're going to look like, what they're going to be doing uh, on the internet, and how does uh, the Launchpad Accelerator tie in with that longer strategy of the next billion users for Google. So I think the biggest value we provide here for Google is learning. And that's what my team is all passionate about. 
Um, there's so much innovation happening around the world and we are blind to it. Most companies here in Silicon Valley are blind to it. Uh, our ability to help learn, support entrepreneurs around the world helps us rethink how we're building developer tools, how are we looking at our product. When you're building a developer platform and you're sitting in Silicon Valley and you assume that everybody has the newest iPhone in their pocket and they have full bandwidth all the time uh, and you know everybody speaks English and everybody can do their login using yeah. their Facebook account or whatever, yeah. or Gmail account, um, that doesn't happen. Yeah, I believe we've had 26 startups from India already participate over the last three years. So talk to us about what's different about uh, India and if we had to put India in a triangle between uh, San Francisco, Tel Aviv uh, and Bangalore, uh, you know, what are the points of difference and what are the degrees of connection? So India has always been kind of the top of, uh, of, of the program from the level of startups that we bring in, uh, but also from the maturity of the market. When we look at kind of advanced technologies, like today when we have a uh, big focus on AI and machine learning in the right. program, some of the best examples we found were in India because of the okay. level of development. Okay. Because I don't see a new technology emerging and Indian developers not automatically absorbing, embedding it and coming up with solutions. I think the speed of execution in India and the adoption of new technologies is amazing and we didn't have that five years ago. Okay. India was not there five years ago, so it's really amazing to see the growth of the Indian market. Buzz Films was founded in 2015. Um, we were working outside the country um, and we saw India has like the fundamentals which really you have 250 plus million people with connected devices and you have a movie crazy population. I think that you know 50% of the, the total Indian entertainment uh, industry is Bollywood but really like almost the other 50% is regional languages. So we said look there are lots of people who are actually focused on Bollywood, and there's a huge audience of people, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, you know, 200 films per language per year, and no one is really serving those people. Our entire vision was to make streaming available for everybody across India. It's just not the top 5 to 10% who can stream. Our compression technology is the world's best right now. Netflix or YouTube would struggle to stream in a Velour or a Coimbatore, but on a fast film streams seamlessly. So when you go to these places, you, you don't expect connectivity always. So if a guy tries to open an app and uh, he wants to browse it without the internet, we allow it, them to do that. So we have our, our uh, images cached, our movies cached. And uh, one of the great features that we were the first app to do in the country is where we allow a user to share an entire movie with another fast films user without any data. But this is 100% legal and encrypted. So we don't believe that um, a premium video service like ours can survive on, on advertising. We're only charging 40 rupees a month right now. Um, so it's affordable really for you know, the entire mass market. The number one most important insight we got is like how important the customer is to our entire product design, how he should be at the center of our product design. But we also know there are some people that have downloaded the app and then uninstalled it. And you know, we've, we've learned so much in the last two weeks about you know, going back to those users, understanding like, you know, you know, why you love it, why you don't love it, and then doing very, very quick iteration cycles to improve the product. One of the most important thing in UI UX is to understand that there is no such thing as good application or bad application. It's always about the match between the application, what you designed as a startup, and your customers or your users. Get out of the building, meet the users, and conduct the proper usability testing. Startups tend to neglect their users' emotions. Today, in our society, most people don't buy what they need. They buy what they want. And want is all about emotions. And if you want to create a great product, one of the most important things on earth is to know exactly what your users are going to feel and to make sure that your application will support this set of emotions. And the team at Real Yatri started with an emotional response 
to the travails of rail travel in India. One of the largest downloaded travel apps, the challenge for Rail Yatri, was getting data to dance to their tunes. Our own personal experiences in travel, in traveling long distance in India, and worrying about whether your ticket would get confirmed or not, or standing at a railway station trying to think, trying to think, you know, where will, when will your train arrive? The best way to kind of look at it or answer that question is collect data, build up a big layer of analytics, machine learning intelligence layer on top of it, and start answering some of the questions, and that's how we started. Our algorithms have become much smarter now than they were two years back. Now, getting data in India is a challenge, getting location in India is a challenge, because you have to do it in a very battery-efficient way for journeys that run into like 14 hours, 24 hours, and that's an area Google has already created, you know, kind of excel in that sense. So that's definitely one area that we are very interested to understand how we can optimize on that better. For the next two years, for us, the, the, the value of this platform would just not reach to the consumers, but it will also reach to the businesses, you know, who want to serve these travelers better. We do not intend to charge the travelers. The businesses should pay. And, uh, and we believe in the Indian market, that's the only model that is ready to scale. With that, it's time for a break on this special edition of Young Turks that's coming to you from San Francisco and we've been bringing you all the highlights of Google Launchpad Accelerator program. A lot more coming up, so keep watching. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.